You know, if you talk to a little kid, all little kids at some point in their life um, were afraid of monsters. They thought they were hiding under the bed or in the closet or somewhere else. But today I want to talk to you about a more insidious monster, kind of a real life monster, not a movie monster or not a monster in their minds, but a real life monster. You see, we're talking about dollars and cents and we're dealing with our finances here. But the monster I want to talk about today is the debt monster. Because the debt monster is wreaking habits, havoc in the lives of people today. The debt monster is hurting marriages. It's, it's destroying families. College students are, are graduating with an almost insurmountable debt load. And so, first of all, I want to talk to you about the damage that the debt monster can bring. And so we're going to talk about three areas that the debt monster can damage us if we're not careful. So here's the first area, that debt can lead to bondage. De debt can bring bondage into our lives. Listen to Proverbs 22, 7. Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is a servant to the lender. You see, when we owe money and we can't pay it back, there's a real bondage that comes with that. There's a real oppression that comes to that. And so in the book of Proverbs, Solomon, the wisest man and one of the richest men who ever lived, he says, don't, don't get into debt. You can't pay back because you're going to feel like you're in slavery. You're going to feel like you're in bondage. But really, the debt monster can do that to us. It can bring that kind of damage into our lives. Second of all, the debt monster can destroy families. You know, in the Old Testament, if you had a debt that you couldn't pay, you literally had to, in a sense, sell your kids into slavery to whomever you owed the money to, and you wouldn't get your children back until the debt was paid off. Listen to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. The day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elijah and cried out, My husband who served you is dead. And you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatening to take away my sons as slaves. I mean, this is an awful predicament. Here's this grieving mom, and she comes to the prophet Elijah saying, Listen, I, I have debt. My husband's gone. I don't know how to replay it. And I, I know the tradition is that I'm going to have to sell my kids into slavery until the debt is paid off. But you know, today, we don't have that kind of slavery. But you know, when we can't pay our debts, when we, we can't pay our creditors, it brings a huge burden dealing with, with creditors or, or those people that harass us on the phones. And so that can bring a lot of difficulty into our lives. Now, here's the third area that we can be damaged by debt. Uh, debt can hurt God's reputation. You see, the word Christian actually means little Christ. I don't know if you knew that. And so when you and I call ourselves Christians, we're telling the world that we're a little Christ, that we're a follower of Jesus. And we don't, when we don't pay our bills well, when we don't handle our money well, we can hurt not only our reputation, but we can also hurt God's reputation. Listen to Psalm 37, 21. Psalm 37, 21. The wicked borrow and never repay, but the godly are generous givers. You see, it says wicked people or ungodly people or unrighteous people don't pay. But, but godly people pay their bills and pay them on time. And so just remember, we have God's reputation at stake on how we use our money. Now, I don't want you to leave discouraged. So I want to leave you with some encouragement because there are three actions that we can take to break free from the debt monster's grip. And so I want to share those three actions with you. And here's the first action. You got to admit that you have a problem. You see, our problem is greed, and greed is this insidious kind of deadly disease that all of us struggle at one level or another. And greed comes in all shapes and all sizes, and the greed I might struggle with might not be the same that you struggle with, but we all struggle with greed. I mean, listen to what Jesus himself says in Luke 12, verse 15. Then he said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. You see, we, we've got to admit that we have this problem with greed. And Jesus says, hey, we got to be careful. This thing called greed is tough. This thing called greed can hurt our lives and ruin our lives. So he uses word like be aware, you know, be alert, be on guard, be watchful. That's how powerful greed is. And we need to be careful. And so if we're struggling with this, we got to admit this to God. Then the second thing we got to do is we got to confess the mess. 
We really do. We, we just got to tell God the truth. We, we got to come out of the shadows and we got to confess the mess to God and say, God, I'm really challenged. I'm, I'm really messing up here. God, I'm, I'm, I'm drowning in a sea of debt. And God, I just got to tell you, I'm sorry about that. And I don't know what to do about it. And God, I need you to help me. You know, 1 John 1, 9 is a beautiful verse. It says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Listen, I want to give you some encouragement. God loves you and he cares about you. He already knows that you're in a mess and he just wants you to tell him the truth so that you can get better and so that he can bring healing and he can bring help to the situation. And so if we want to get out of this insurmountable debt, uh, we need to just confess the mess and ask him to help clean it up because God specializes in cleaning up our messes. And here's the third and final thing we got to do. We got to decide to trust God to forgive and free you. I, I call this D-Day. D-Day is decision day. And, and D-Day is the day we say, God, I'm not going to go into debt anymore. And God, with your help, I'm going to get out of debt. And God, that's a place I never want to be in my life. But nothing is going to happen until we make this decision. Now, here's the really wonderful thing about God. We understand that we can't do it on our own. You cannot get yourself out of debt on your own. But you know what? The Bible says God can do the impossible. The Bible says there is nothing that God cannot do. So your debt might feel like an insurmountable problem to you, but it is not a problem that's too difficult for God because God specializes in the impossible. But, but you know what? He, he wants you to join him in that. And so you need to decide and, and you need to do and you need to take some steps with God's help so that you can get out of debt. You need to confess the mess, ask God to help you with it. You need to make a decision. And I really want to encourage you to tell a friend and then you need to get a plan. And I want to encourage you that we have a way to put a budget together on our Pursue um, God.org website. Uh, we have a way to help you answer some questions about finances. We have a number of really good videos because we want to help you and we want to support you. But here's what you cannot do. You cannot act like there's not a problem. Listen, there's not just an elephant room in the room. There is a debt monster in the room. And so you know what we're going to do about that? We're not going to avoid it anymore. We're not going to deny it anymore. We're going to say, God, I'm going to admit I have a problem. God, I'm going to confess the mess. And God, I'm going to decide this very day to trust you to not only forgive me, but also to free me.